In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 master tips to help you get started as a beginner with kettlebell training. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50K giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. <laughs> Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstark hier. Let's start with tip number one, safety rules. We have four rules in our kettlebell gym. Hands free, flat feet, enough space, safe takeoff. Hands free means that you don't want to have anything covering your fingers or your wrist. You might either damage yourself or the kettlebell. Flat feet means that you either want to train with shoes that have a flat sole or you want to train barefoot. Your body's proper proprioception depends upon what's attached to the soles of your feet. If you wear shoes that are cushioned and have these thick soles that are made for running, your body has a warped sense of proprioception. For lifting weights, that might be a problem. Enough space means that you want to clear your surroundings. It might sound funny, but it happened to me that I was tripping over a kettlebell as I was walking backwards. So steer clear by making sure that you have enough space around you as well as around your kettlebell. Safe takeoff means that you want to understand how to maneuver kettlebells. People get hurt because they don't know how to pick up weights. And when you start working with kettlebells, you have to know how to pick up weights. And that's the reason why you have to learn how to deadlift. Master tip number two, assessment. Before you start to move often, you want to move well. So you want to assess your hips as well as your shoulder. You can assess your hips via the hinge, which we will cover in a few minutes. With your shoulder, you just want to do a proper arm extension and see what happens to your elbow as well as your shoulder joint. A perfect prerequisite would be that you can extend your arms overhead while there's no pulling going on in the upper back area as well as your elbows being fully locked. If this is not the case, you might want to try some great mobility exercises first. Master tip number three, beginner's weight. Men can get started with a 12 kg kettlebell and women can get started with an 8 kg kettlebell. Now, of course, there's always people that are accept to this rule. Some men have to start lighter. Some women can start heavier. At the end of the day, it's a great recommendation that we have seen based upon our experience working with people in real life. Master tip number four, evergreen weights. When you become more proficient with kettlebell training, you will tap into the so-called evergreen weights. Evergreen weights are weights that you can use for the rest of your life. For women, that might be 10, 12, 14, up to 16 kg. And for men, it might be 20, 24, up to 28. KG. Yes, progressive overload is important, but scientific research also shows that you don't have to up the ante and go heavier every time you pick up a weight for a great stimuli. And since kettlebells work differently by nature, evergreen weights will give you a great bang for your buck every time you pick them up, even if you've been lifting for a long time. Master tip number five, kettlebell size. There are different types of diameters and sizes of kettlebells on the market. Some of those sizes on the market don't even respect the USP and the nature of the kettlebell. For example, these triangular ones. Don't even pick them up even if they've been granted to you for free. I believe competition kettlebells are the way to go. And you want to make sure that these competition kettlebells are hollow core. I call them Superflow. We sell these Superflow kettlebells as well. So if you're interested, you'll find the link in the description. Master tip number six, the hinge. We've touched on the hinge a little bit. Now we're going to explain it in detail. The hinge is one of the most crucial movement patterns that you have to learn when you pick up a kettlebell. So many exercises require for you to understand the hinge. That's why it is part of the curriculum. The hinge works like this. You have a shoulder with stance, you stand tall, all the joints are locked, and now you push your hips back, the upper body leans forward, your knees are unlocking, and you keep your spine straight and extend your arms at the side of your body. Now you should feel some stretching in your hamstrings, and now as you come up, fully extend the hips. Master tip number seven, Beware of glute amnesia. Many of us sit a lot since we have an office job, which means we sit on a desk all day. This leads to a specific condition that I call glute amnesia. Glute amnesia might look like this during a deadlift or a swing. Huh. So I have this hyperlordosis. I push the chest out, 
but my hip is not fully extended. I'm not squeezing the glutes. So if you want to combat glute amnesia, you want to think about pushing the hips forward, squeezing the glutes. Now the joint, the hip joint is fully locked and by extension also the knee. Then the deadlift is supposed to look like this. I always think about pushing my hips inside the handle of the bell and a swing should look like this. Master tip number eight. Don't mistake the kettlebell for a weird looking dumbbell. You see the biggest difference between a kettlebell and a dumbbell is the weight displacement. Because of this, the USP of kettlebells are exercises with momentum. With the kettlebell, you can see that the weight displacement goes downwards. It's an extension of my hand and it's further down below. With a dumbbell, you can see that the weight displacement evens itself out between the left and the right side, which is perfect for control. Now, swinging like this, yes, it might work to a certain extent, but because of the weight displacement, it just feels completely off. With the kettlebell, however, since the weight sits further down below, exercises with momentum, swinging motions work perfectly. Yes, you can also do the grinds such as a press, a squat or a deadlift. But because of the spherical nature of the kettlebell, the exercises will feel different and also target different muscle groups to a certain extent. And that's one of the reasons why kettlebells are distinct from dumbbells. They're not better, they're just different. Master tip number nine, learn the big three. The swing, the clean and press and the snatch. A kettlebell swing works like this. I take one step back to create a half a meter distance to the kettlebell. I hinge, tilt the bell towards me so that the base is off the floor. This is my starting position or the setup, which is the first rep. From this position, I swing the kettlebell and by extension my arm between my legs so that the arm makes full contact with the body. We call this ABC, arm body connection. I hip thrust the weight upwards and I make sure that my arm stays connected to my body until the hip extension is boom, finished. Now the kettlebell starts flying and reaches its apex approximately at chest level. But before it reaches its apex, I want to switch hands since we do the hand to hand swing. Now kettlebell reaches its apex, now gravity sets back in and I don't influence gravity. I let it do its thing. I wait for my arm to reconnect with my body and as soon as I feel this reconnection, I go back into the back swing. Now did you see how I parked the bell? This is the last rep. With the clean and press, the setup is the same like in a swing, which is rep number one. I swing the kettlebell between my legs, hip thrust it upwards, but now I don't use as much force and there's more interference going on from my arm. So I pull the kettlebell up close to my body, insert my full hand inside the window of the kettlebell spirit and rack it close to my body, making sure that the arm makes contact with my body and my hips as well as my knees are fully extended. From this position, I press the weight up, thinking about that I wanna press the handles up first, making sure I have this straight line between my elbow and my wrist joint. And once I reach the top fixation overhead, I fully extend my elbow, locking the shoulder. Then I come back down again in that reverse maneuver like I went back up, racking the bell, and then I drop the kettlebell from this position into the backswing, turning the palm towards me, grabbing it, leading back a little bit, back into the backswing, and back up. The snatch is the king of all three kettlebell exercises and it's based in the same biomechanical fundamentals of the clean, which means backswing, acceleration pull, hand insertion, racking the weight overhead, turning the palm towards me, pulling the elbow in, letting the kettlebell drop, back down onto the backswing. And 
Master tip number 10, kettlebells are a craft that requires skill. Similar to power moves such as the snatch or the clean and jerk with a barbell, the kettlebell demands skillful execution. Now yes, even dumbbell exercises and machines require some form of proficiency. However, with the kettlebell, it's completely different. It takes way more practice to master a clean and press or a snatch. It takes improved kinesthetic literacy and way more practice to control and feel and understand a kettlebell once it's in the rack position and when you press it overhead. It targets different muscle groups in certain exercises that you have to have a good connection with. So skill is a big part of kettlebell training. So don't get lost if you start working with an exercise for the first time and it doesn't feel quite right yet. It takes a lot of work and it's nothing that a thousand reps cannot fix. Here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share it with the friends, and then go watch this video right here. Since you're just getting started with kettlebells, you might need another tutorial and more exercises, something that is a little bit more hands-on so you can get started with kettlebells right away. If that's the case, you wanna watch this video right here. It's been helping thousands and thousands of beginners all around the world, so I'm sure you get a lot out of it when you watch it. So go click it right now.